is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's. So it's that time of year again. Everybody's heading back to school. My sympathy is out there with all you kids that are heading back into your conditioning plants known as the school system. But I wanted to give my thoughts on it because a lot of teens listen to this channel and they ask me for advice. They ask me what to do. They ask me if they should drop out of school. So I wanted to talk about back to school since everybody's heading back. But I'm sure they'll flag this video somehow, some, some way, because that's all they seem to be doing with my videos. Nonetheless, first I want to start by saying I am not the parent of any of of the listeners of this channel, so I have no right to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. But for those of you who are young and you're learning this stuff and waking up and you're saying, you know, you want to drop out, you don't want to be a part of the school system, I say and I recommend that you do not do that. Because it's likely that you're going to have to be part of the matrix, part of the working world. We all are. We all have been there. And pretty much it doesn't mean if you don't have a degree that you can't be. But let's be realistic. The people who we hear are dropouts that become millionaires and all that stuff. These people are all connected to the elites. These are all fake stories, rags to riches. The same stuff you hear with these musicians, these rappers that grew up in the in the you know worst parts of the world, and now they're the you know these rich millionaire rappers. This is all part of the mind control because they want the average person out there to think that they can achieve that type of success. And the fact of the matter. Because the only way you're achieving that kind of success is if you're a part of them. And if you do achieve any success outside of it, which is possible, people come up with ideas and create things, they will immediately start monitoring you based on the amount of money you make. If you come up with an invention, you start making millions and millions of dollars, they're going to come after you. They're going to come after you for the patent on it. They're going to come after you to steal your idea. Or they're just going to monitor you and hit you with all types of audits from the IRS. They don't want anyone getting rich inside this system. They'll let you get enough money you know being a millionaire nowadays sadly isn't even enough for a lot of these people to survive on because of the lives that they live but back to the back to school is the zombies head to walmart to buy new clothes because it's a new school year right the clothes they had three months ago are out time to buy new clothes because the tv tells you so gotta buy that new book bag Got to get those new notepads so you can write down poise, pointless, regurgitated crap. What you need to know about being in the school system is it's a great opportunity for you now to help wake other people up. Because you know the truth, which is Jesus Christ, and because you know how this world is being completely deceived and lied to and manipulated, you can help wake up your friends in school. Because those people are still at an age where the conditioning is not fully set in. You see, it's harder for people in their 30s and 40s to snap out of it because they've had 40 years of conditioning. They're prideful. They've made some money inside the system. They believe in the system. They'll fight for the system. But 13, 14, 15, 16-year-olds, a lot of them are in school going, what is the point of this? This is a total waste. And you can tell them, listen, this is a conditioning system. This is what's really going on. Another thing that's important to do is to watch the behavior that's going on in school. Realize that they create fear, they create panic, they condition you by giving you things like homework, right? Why do they give you that after you sit there for eight hours all day? Because they don't want the conditioning to ever stop. They want to make sure you're still afraid of that test tomorrow. The world's going to end if you don't pass. The world's going to end if you don't get a certain score in your SAT and get into a certain school. All of this crap that they create, they're all distractions for you. If you can navigate around the distractions and succeed inside their system, you will be better off in this world when you graduate high school or college. Now, I went to college. I graduated college. I was a good student, but I mean, I never studied ever. You know, it was pretty rare that I ever studied, but I still managed to have a pretty high GPA in, my, in the threes. I think I had like a 3.5 or something like that. Just because, you know, I was able to just five minutes before a test, open up my book and, and read it and remember what I read, write it, you know, and write it down in a test. It's all just part of the system. But this is a great time for you to learn how to navigate through it. Because what happens is people go through this system, then they go through college. Some are even dumb enough to go and get their master's degrees, thinking that they're smart and they're intelligent. And then they go out into the real world. They realize that unless they have connections, 
They're not really getting interviews at any major corporations. There's not jobs waiting for them, lined up for them. You can use this to your advantage to not let the fear of what happens when you leave school get to you, right? Because most people leave and they go, oh, I got to get my resume fixed. Oh, I've got to, oh, I'm so nervous I have an interview. If you start studying human behavior, which is something that they do and they should teach in school, there's a reason they don't. They don't want people to study human behavior. It's very important to know human behavior. It's very important to know exactly how the enemy thinks and how the enemy works so that you can navigate around the enemy and not let the enemy manipulate you and control you. You see, these people who created this entire system, which is based on fear and manipulation, they don't want you evaluating others, looking at others and going, what is this guy thinking, right? They want you constantly intimidated. They want you looking up to your teachers, being inspired by them. You should only be looking up to Jesus Christ. You shouldn't be looking up to somebody because of their age. Because you don't know anything about them. A lot of these teachers are Masons. That's true. And a lot of them, you know, if you think about it, teachers in schools are some of the dumbest people on the planet. They're nearly impossible. Impossible. I'm not saying all, because I know there's some teachers that listen. But I'm not saying it about you specifically, but think about your other co-teachers that you work with. If you try to explain any of this stuff, they will not snap out of it because they are so indoctrinated with the lies of history and the lies of, of science and all this stuff that they teach that they now do this for a living and unfortunately brainwash young children into believing it. So what I wanted to say and the point I wanted to get across is you're at a great time in your life if you're going through this awakening process at a young age because you can help so many other people wake up because their brains are still developing. Now, when they're in their upper teens, it's a lot harder than, you know, getting someone who's six, seven, eight years old. That's when they really indoctrinate, you know, young kids, even three-year-olds. Because their brains are developing, right? They're learning to walk. They're learning to read. They're learning to write. This is the period of repetition. This is where you go through third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade. And you learn the same pointless stuff that gets you nowhere in life. So the brain is still developing, but they're, they're weakening people's brains by feeding repetition into their heads and not allowing them to, to thrive and grow and ask questions. Right? They're telling you, this is how it is. Now memorize th this. That's what they're saying, right? They're saying, look, we're giving you all the facts here. Your job is to memorize it. That should be enough for people to go, um, they're telling me how it is and they're, they're just making me memorize it. That's it. You test after test memorizing the same stuff because they want you completely indoctrinated and fully believing in the, this world of lies that we live in. So what you can do you know, if you're someone in school, is you can start helping wake up other people. Start showing them the signs and the symbols. There's a reason that I constantly do that. It's the easiest way. Because people see the repetition of the same things over and over, and they go, okay, this is starting to get weird. They might see the first video and go, oh, you're being stupid about the pyramid, the triangle, and all that stuff. Why do you think they indoctrinate us with those symbols when we're a kid? Right? Why do you think they teach us about rectangles and circles and pyramids and all this stuff? Right? And make it seem like, oh, you know, it's just a shape. I could take a piece of paper and I could swiggle around a ten-pointed, you know, turd or draw whatever I want and say it's a shape. There's a reason. They indoctrinate you with these shapes so that when we, at this stage, when people even wake up, they go, oh, it's just a pyramid. Oh, it's just a circle. These are all symbols used in black magic and sorcery and the occult. It's all about the points in these symbols that they use. So my point is a lot of people at first might look at, say, a video that I do on Eminem or someone like that, right? Because that's their favorite musician. They might say, this is ridiculous. You say, no, look, here are the symbols, look. Okay, well, they won't believe it at first because nobody is going to. It takes time. And you say, all right, well, how come, here's a video of Rihanna. How come it's the same stuff? Here's a video of Drake, same stuff. Lil Wayne, same stuff. That slowly starts removing layers in their head because then they start looking for these signs and symbols. Then they start seeing it everywhere. Then you can start teaching them about Freemasonry and secret societies weaponized weather, all that stuff. There's, the rabbit hole never ends. It never ends. But to me, the easiest way to wake people up is starting at that point, at a young age. It's going to be hard to go into school, tap a 12-year-old on the shoulder, or tell a teacher that the earth is flat, and have everybody laughing at you. Then everything you say from that point on, they won't deem as credible. Whether it's flat or not isn't my point. My point is, think of it from that mindset. Think with your brain. Somebody who's completely programmed. You just go up to them and say something like the earth is flat. You're not going to help in their awakening process. If that's something that they want to, later on they get passionate about, like a lot of these people are, 
that's fine. They can be passionate about whatever they want. But it's not something that's going to wake somebody up right off the bat. So if you're looking to help wake people up and peel layers back, you start with the signs, you start with the symbols, you talk about these free the Freemasons. You can even just go there and say, why are there one of these lodges in every town? What do these people do? Who are they? Why aren't we asking these types of questions? And it becomes an easier and easier process. So if you're someone who is in school or going back to school since it's Labor Day, is that what it is? Labor Day, right? Or Memorial? I don't even know. Labor Day, I believe. These ridiculous holidays that they have. But if someone is going back, yes, I, it, it's pretty awful. I still have nightmares about school, not for any reason whatsoever other than getting up and having to go get pretty much sit in a prison cell for eight hours and listen to the lies, lie after lie. But you can use that to your advantage to help others and start expanding their brain and just say, hey, you know, do you think the stuff we're learning is crap? A lot of kids, 90% would be like, yeah. But of course, you have the 10% that is enamored with history and don't. They'll never say the textbook is lying to them because they can't get wrap their heads around the fact that there's such evil people in this world that would lie and manipulate for, for money, for fame, for power, endless power to keep control of that power. They don't believe that. A lot of these people who don't have Christ in their life can't believe that because they don't understand what evil is. Those of us who believe in Jesus Christ or devout followers of Scripture, we know how evil is these people are scripture tells us about it people who are atheists and stuff they just go oh okay i could see them being able to weaponize weather or do stuff like this but why would they ever do that why would they do it to us i just it doesn't make sense i could see them having the capability science wise of controlling storms they've only been talking about it since the 50s and 60s but nobody would do that to attack a city like houston or attack their own country that's because they there are so many actual good-hearted people and also naive people that they don't understand or want to deal with the fact that there are people who are evil because they don't hear about them on the news we know that these are the most evil sick disturbed individuals you can imagine they're not human these people are demonically possessed they are so sick the stuff we talk about stuff we read about what they do to children you don't even you can't have a conscious to do the things that they do you can't they're operating on such an evil level that the common person can't comprehend that they even exist. So just think about that. Remember that. While you're there, while you're going through this nightmare. At some point it's over. But you do still need to go through it. Because you're going to need to make money inside of the system. It's the way it's designed. Don't listen to people who are like, oh, you know, you, you can't eat. You can't, even if you wanted to go live in the woods and build a tent and forage. Guess what? Who owns the woods? You have enough money to buy that land and then pay tax on that land? Now, there's some people who are fortunate enough to inherit money who could do stuff like that. But the common person, no. So you go through the system, but while you're there, study behavior. right? Ask questions and see how people react. Don't be afraid to ask your teacher a question. right? And even if everybody laughs at you, you know in the back of your mind that you know the truth. Who cares? Let them laugh. People laugh at me all the time. I could care less. I look at them and I just shake my head. I go, man, these people are so stupid. I mean, I don't even blink anymore. I never really did. I never really cared about stuff like that. But, you know, you can confront a teacher with raising your hand and instead of asking a question they want you to ask, ask a question and just say, okay, well, since you're discussing World War II and Nazi Germany, now obviously you can't ask anything that would be considered anti-Semitic. We can't get into I can't even say the word in my video or the bots are going to block it. But you can raise your hand and say, what, what about Operation Paperclip? And your teacher might go, what is that? I never heard of that. You say, well, since you're teaching everybody about World War II and the U.S. and Germany and all this stuff, which a lot of it is fictitious, say, how come no one talks about Operation Paperclip? And the teacher plays dumb or maybe he doesn't know. You say, well, why don't you educate yourself on it? It's a CIA operation. It's, it's government documented. It's out there for everyone to read. That the United States brought all these Nazi scientists over here who were performing tests such as MKUltra on people. The teacher might go, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, is it? This is government documented, admitted by the CIA. Even Bill Clinton, when he was president, admitted that these MK Ultra experiments were going on. Ask them that. If you're in science class, and they're giving you all this heebie-jeebie about science and gravity and all this stuff, 
raise your hand and be like, hey, do you believe that through this, you know, whatever they might be teaching that day, that they can control weather? And the teacher might laugh and say, no, that's stupid. Why? Because they've beaten that into people's heads that, well, you can't control nature, you can't control Mother Nature. Even though in the video I just did, I showed you President Kennedy talking about it, showed you Disney in 1959 already talking about having the capability in 1959 to divert storms, right? To divert them, to send them off if a storm's coming and they detect it. To control weather. Show them that and say, okay. And now they might go, well, I don't believe the government would ever do that to us. You can just say, okay, well, if the government won't, won't do that to us and you think that they do have this technology, then why do things like Hurricane Harvey happen? Why don't they use the technology to push the storms offshore back into the ocean? Huh? That's how you have to think. That's how you have to operate. Because when you try to speak to somebody and they don't wake up, you still need to be able to think to yourself on your feet and say, okay, you don't want to believe that there's these evil people who do this stuff and control everything. You don't want to believe that? Fine. But do you believe that this science is possible? And they'd be pretty stupid to say, no, I don't think it's possible at all for them to manipulate or control weather because they've already admitted to doing it. Show them the videos of them admitting to doing it. And look at the technology that we have. I mean, people could take a crap, sit on a phone and watch live television. You don't think that they can do stuff like this? Of course they can. So once a person goes, okay, maybe they can do that, and then of course the reaction is going to be, why would they destroy their own city? Why would they do this? Now, we know that they love to destroy and recreate. They love the rebirth. Almost every Illuminati symbol is about rebirth and transformation. You think they care about destroying Houston? Guess who's repaying the building? Taxpayers' money. And then they use it for philanthropists to come out and say, oh, they donated money. And the big story, instead about these people who are suffering, is, oh, look, so-and-so donated so much money. We're supposed to go, ooh, ah, what a great person. Diverting attention off of it. You can just say that, though, to someone and say, okay, if you believe they have the capability, then... Why wouldn't they prevent these storms like Sandy, like Harvey, like now we're going to see Irma or whatever that one's called coming up? These are things to think about, things to question. So while you're in school, don't be afraid to ask questions. You're not going to get thrown out of school. Don't ask anything anti-Semitic or anything. Don't bring up – obviously you can't bring up religion and stuff like that. You can't privately with your friends talk about Jesus Christ. That's what I always did. But you know you can't raise your hand and talk about it. You get thrown out for hate speech. But you can use the opportunity that you're while you're there to help wake up other people. You can confront teachers with questions, and somebody else in the class might hear you and say, hmm, that you don't even know, not a friend of yours. and might say, wow, I'm going to go home and look into that. I never heard of that. And that person might form an awakening just from hearing you ask a question about Operation Paperclip or talking about the CIA and asking teachers about it. So just remember that there's always a job. There's always work for us to do. Instead of thinking about, well, going back to school, yeah, it's a nightmare. But at some point, it's over, right? You move on with life. You need to have that piece of paper, unfortunately. I mean, unless you want to lie and say you, you know, graduated when you didn't. But just use the time to your advantage. Don't run from things like this. Just embrace the opportunity that's there for you to help wake others up. So back to school 2017, I guess, is upon us now. For the parents out there who have to send their children into the institutions, I'll keep them in my prayers. I always am. I feel for these for everybody that has to be in, that goes into these school systems because they're being institutionalized. But that's the way it is. It's the world that they've created, and we have to be able to take the knowledge that we have, use it to our advantage, instead of let them beat us down and go, "I don't want to be here because I don't want to hear these lies." We'll just laugh it off, laugh off their lies, and be like, "Yeah, that's that's not ridiculous." And then go ace their test. <laughs> Just be like, you know, yeah, I read about it. I know it's nothing but lies. But look, here's an A, and I still don't believe it. So you're not going to indoctrinate me with this nonsense. That's a good mindset to have. So I just wanted to pass that along because kids ask me all the time, you know, should they drop out? What should they do? They're thinking about dropping out. I don't recommend that. I'm not your parent. I'm not you. But if you're asking me for my opinion, do not drop out. It's not going to get you anywhere. Is learning this stuff going to get you anywhere? Absolutely not. But you have to play with inside their game. This is their game. 
And if you can if you can work around and navigate around their game and their lies and their manipulation, you'll be okay in this world. That's what I've always done. You know, I see it, I know it, and I go, all right, I'll navigate around it. I'll play dumb. I'll play this, even though I know, and I'll watch other people's behavior and see what they're doing and know what they're doing. That's how we have to live, you know, if we're going to survive inside this system before the trumpet sound. And that's what we're going to have to do, right? The Bible tells us we have to endure. So we have to endure. I thank you all for listening to today's show. God bless all of you and your families.